Hello everybody, it is I, Captain Oblivious Mist, and before you go, oh, so this is the remake that's taken you nine months. It's worse than the original, or worse than your usual videos. No, this is not the right, well, yes, I am doing a remake on the Oceanic video, a complete remake from the ground up, but for those of you who preferred the original script, and wouldn't like and doesn't like the new script when that comes out i've done a slightly updated version of my original video where you can actually hear what i'm saying in it so the music isn't screwing around and as well as that uh i've updated the intertitles so i hope you enjoy a slightly improved video and uh let's get into it then In the 1800s, competition over the North Atlantic was fierce. The oceans were dominated by the Cunard and White Star lines, and the competitor of the White Star, Cunard, had just introduced the Campania and the Lucania, and with the Germans introducing the Kaiser class of ships, and with the last White Star liner being a, a converted cargo ship called the Simric, and the, and the White Star liners Majestic and Teutonic were becoming outdated and and old compared to the newer ships. In order to compete, White Star Line needed a new flagship. And so, White Star began talks with Harlan the Wolf about a brand new ship. The new flagship was to be called Oceanic, and her keel was laid down in the Queen's Island Yard in Belfast, 1897. She was to use a luxury over speed strategy first used on the Simric, and she was to cost £1 million, around about £115 million today. Despite the fact that the speed wasn't the main priority, she could still go at a healthy speed of 21 knots, and she was powered by two four-cylinder triple expansion engines which would be the largest in the world. But in order to build her, they had to construct a brand new 500-ton overhead gantry crane. Oceanic had her bridge integrated into her superstructure, giving her a clean look. She would also have two long funnels that, in my opinion, made the ship look adorable, and when she was completed she could hold up to 410 first class, 300 second class, and over 1,000 third class passengers. She was not only meant to be the biggest ship ever built, but she was also meant to be the most luxurious in the world, and her interiors proved this, with her dining saloon capped off with an amazing dome that had three women underneath it representing Liverpool, England and New York, which had her look beautiful, but as, as the great big move said, she was caught in between ships that felt like palaces and ships that felt like, well, ships, and this was quite clear in some places, such as also in her dining room she still had swivel chairs, and though her third class accommodations were an improvement over other ships of the time, unfortunately there were nothing to write home about. On 26th of August 1899 she left Belfast for Liverpool. When she arrived at Liverpool she was open to the public and press where great fanfare was awaiting for her. She departed for her maiden voyage on the 6th of September 1899. Thomas Ismay was meant to be on board her for this voyage, but at this point he was too unwell, and thus he le was left at home. Now back to the Oceanic. Her maiden voyage went without event until her the end of her voyage six days later, when they discovered that the ladder was not long enough to meet the Oceanic, which must have been simultaneously funny and embarrassing for the person who didn't realise, and stopped to think, oh, maybe we should make a longer ladder, but hey ho, who cares? as they were able to open a gangway door on one of the lower decks. So yay, no one got fired. But moving on from that, surprisingly, no one cared all that much about the vibrations or that, as, as she was met with much praise and J.P. Morgan's yachts, co uh, course care, as she had pulled up next to her. Morgan had his eye on the White Star Line and the Oceanic, which would become apparent later when he bought the Oceanic and the White Star, but that's a topic for a future video. The Oceanic's early career was fairly eventful, as she was also loved by both sides of the Atlantic and had a reputation of being reliable, but she still had a few mishaps in her early days, including one in 1900, while she was docked in Liverpool, her mast was struck by lightning and it had to be repaired. 
Now, the next one I would consider to be fairly more, um, well, severe compared to the other one, as on August 6th of the same year, while birthed in New York, a fire started in the SS Bovik's cargo hold, which was docked near her and threatened to burn her, but thankfully the fire was put under control before it could spread to the Oceanic, which if that had happened, I should say that would be pretty hot. Ow! Fine, I'll stop with the puns for now. <laughs> Anyways, back to the video. On the 7th of August 1901, the Oceanic was sailing around in fog, making it really hard to spot small vehicles, or vessels in this case, including one, a Waterford vessel, the SS Concordia, which, um, yeah. The Oceanic, with her size, couldn't spot the Concordia and thus they collided with her. Thankfully they kept the Oceanic's bow inside of the Strucken uh, ship and they lowered two lifeboats to assist with the crew. Unfortunately though, seven crew members still died. Now moving on to the next one. Later into the decade in 1904, four days out from a voyage in New York, Oceanic encountered heavy winds and snow, battering the ship and breaking two portholes, letting a considerable amount of water into the ship. The next year, in 1905, 45 of the ship's firemen mutineered uh, to the unpleasant conditions of their working conditions, which resulted in the conviction and imprisonment of 33 of the stokers. Please do excuse the fact that I stuttered there. I kind of got confused with my own handwriting. Oops. At some point, JP Morgan bought the White Star Line and thought, you know what, despite the fact that the White Star Line has been operating perfectly fine in Liverpool for years, I know we'll move it to Southampton. Why? Well, you see, it will probably benefit because of the close proximity of London and the fact that a subsidiary of theirs, the American Line, had had great success, so the Oceanic with many other White Star Liners had moved to Southampton, which would, uh, well, let's just say it would set the Oceanic to be inside of a equally more famous ship story a few years later. In April of 1912, White Star Line's brand new ocean liner, RMS Titanic, departed Southampton. And in the process, the mooring lines of the SS New York snapped, and almost sent her into the side of the Titanic like the Hawk did with the Olympic, but a few months earlier. Thankfully, the collision was narrowly avoided. Now, you might be asking, what's this got to do with the Oceanic? Well, lucky for you, Sonny Jim, I have the answer. It's because of a little thing known as the coal strike of 1912. And because of this, the Oceanic could not be f supplied with fuel. And thus, she was laid up near the Titanic and was a first-hand witness as the events unfolded. So unfortunately, this would not be the last time the Oceanic would have anything to do with the Titanic saga, as thanks to a little thing known as an iceberg, the Titanic sunk. And while the Oceanic was sailing near the area where the Titanic sunk, she came across the infamous collapsible A, which had three dead bodies on board, and the Oceanic then decided to pull them up and bury them at sea. Yeah, wouldn't want to be a passenger then. And either way though, the Oceanic would sail on. Not for long, as an, though not for long, as an Austrian Duke would soon be shot. In 1914, World War I broke out while the Oceanic was mid-Atlantic, and when she finally arrived on, in port, she was boarded by parts of the British Admiralty, as her construction was partially funded by the British government. She was to be commissioned by them, and she was going to be converted into an armed merchant cruiser, which this is before they realised that's a bad idea. And for this, she was given two 4.7-inch guns, and on the 25th of, uh, 24th of August, sorry, 1914, she departed Southampton for naval service that was to last two weeks, and she was to put, uh, she was to patrol around the Scottish waters of Ferros, crewed by many of the Titanic's old crew, including Second Officer Charles. Charles Lightoller, who said the Oceanic was his favourite ship. She was to shot. Uh, she was to stop and search for uh, other ships for German enforcers or spies, which, you know, could go well. Unfortunately, though, because of this, she was also given two captains, as her old captain was allowed to stay in charge, but there was also one marine captain who was on board. This would later cause many confusions down the chain of command, 
and will ultimately bring me to the next part of the video. Oh, this point's annoying. On the morning of the 8th of September, Commander Smith was on morning watch after a disagreement with Commander Slater over moving a ship at the size of the Oceanic through the islands of Scotland. You could probably guess this is going to go. Well, Smith ordered the navigator to turn west and out to sea. Or so he thought, and he was hoping he, it would keep her safe from any hidden dangers such as coral reef and, well, unbeknownst to Smith, he had accidentally put the ship in between an island and a reef. In other words, as I like to say, he'd put the ship between a rock and a hard place. Slater must, must have felt the course of the ship change as he reappeared on the bridge and counteracted Smith's order, and in what probably caused even more confusion, ordered the Oceanic towards the reef, an accident, which, an accident that ultimately resulted in the Oceanic being grounded, which most likely probably got somebody fired and thus she was stuck. To make matters worse, the sea was nice and calm, so was the tide, and the ADC was so stupid about this that they didn't tell anyone about this for a very long period of time until after she was, you know, kind of kind of hard to hide a ship, so it was after she was discovered off the coast of one of these islands. So, you know, because they believed that the complete and utter incompetence of, well, the Navy would lead to a loss in morale, and this was probably a loss in someone's brain department. Seriously though, how stupid do you have to be? Though the Oceanic was still quite strong to say she had been beached, unfortunately she was eventually broken into by a storm, which Surprisingly, took a, a long time to say she was there for a month being battered by the waves, so... Yeah, but unfortunately this did not look good for the RMS Oceanic, or at this point the HMS Oceanic, as over the years, daring salvagers slowly but surely broke her up for scrap. And one of her propeller blades was actually salvaged from this, which I'm pretty sure you can go and see today. Speaking of things salvaged, one of the Oceanic's lifeboats was discovered back in 2016 and was given to the people who own the Titanic Museum. And now, if you're interested in this, as this is one of the last remaining lifeboats of the White Star Line, you can now find one of the Oceanic's lifeboats right next to the last White Star Liner, the SS Nomadic. So, if you want to go see that, it's in Northern Ireland currently, so... Yeah, but no matter whatever's left of the ship, it still sucks that such a beautiful ship was lost to pure idiocy. Hello there again everybody. Um, Ford clear some things up as I realised I made a mistake in the intro but I can't be bothered to re-record it. So in the intro I said the new Maritime Monday series will come out once every month with basically the first Monday of every month. Unfortunately that is not the case, it's just a random Monday of every month so I have more time to do my research as I do have many other things to worry about such as school and work. Second of all, I would just like to apologise that this video isn't the highest quality of ship stories on the internet. This is because, well, this is the second time I have recorded my voice so, you know, kind of hard to follow a script and read it off without stuttering so I'm very sorry about that but yeah apart from that I hope you found this video informative and I hope you enjoyed it have yourselves a nice day and I'll see you next time on with my video on the RMS Aquitania